James Webb Telescope is finally proving Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory. Professor Hawking's ultimate concept on the creation of the universe, over which he collaborated with KU Leuven's professor Thomas Hertog, was reported in the Journal of High Energy Physics in 2018. The concept prepared for release before Hawking's passing in 2018 is based on string theory and forecasts that the world is limited and significantly more superficial than many existing prominent bang hypotheses imply. The idea solves a cosmological puzzle that the late physicist created himself. It also paves the possibility for scientists to find proof of alternate universes formation. Professor Hertog, whose studies have been funded by the European Research Council, initially unveiled the new idea at a meeting honoring Professor Hawking's 75th birthday at the University of Cambridge in July 2017. What do modern theories assume? According to current Big Bang models, our immediate universe came into being with a quick flash of inflation. In other terms, a fragment of a minute after the Big Bang, the universe expanded at an increased speed. Yet, it is universally believed that once inflation begins, there are some locations where it never ends. It is theorized that quantum phenomena can keep inflation ongoing in some parts of the universe indefinitely, making inflation immortal universally. Our world would subsequently be reduced to a habitable universe, a place where inflation has stopped and stars and planets have developed. The multiverse is an inevitable and likely inevitable outcome of a quantum world ruled mainly through ambiguity and randomness. However, the presence of a multiverse questions our understanding of science and limitations on what astronomy can say about our universe. Some have even suggested that the multiverse theory should not be considered physics because we can test it by jumping from one planet to another. Hawking tenacious, intelligent, and enormously enthusiastic about astronomy, disapproved. The usual theory of eternal inflation predicts that globally our universe is like an infinite fractal, with a mosaic of different pocket universes, separated by an inflating ocean, stated Hawking in a speech in 2017. The local laws of physics and chemistry can differ from one pocket universe to another, which together would form a multiverse. But I have never been a fan of the multiverse. If the scale of different universes in the multiverse is large or infinite, the theory can't be tested. Hawking and Hertog explained that this description of eternal inflation as a hypothesis of the Great Bang is incorrect. The problem with the usual account of eternal inflation is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and treats the quantum effects as small fluctuations around this," said Hertog. However, the dynamics of eternal inflation wipes out the separation between classical and quantum physics. As a consequence, Einstein's theory breaks down in eternal inflation. We predict that our universe, on the largest scales, is reasonably smooth and globally finite. So, it is not a fractal structure," said Hawking. Is there any theory that focuses on string theory? String theory is a school of physical science that aims to integrate mass and theory of relativity with quantum physics by characterizing the essential components of the universe as small vibrating strings. Hawking and Hertog's idea of eternal inflation is built on string theory. Their method is based on the hyperglobal geometry notion from string theory which states that the cosmos is a vast and complicated hologram in which actual reality in particular 3D areas can be simplified to 2D reflections on a surface using mathematics. In eternal inflation, Hawking and Hertog proposed this holography notion to extend the dimension of time. They were able to explain perpetual inflation without relying on Einstein's theory due to this. Perpetual inflation simplified in the new theory to a secular state specified on a spatial area at the dawn of creation. When we trace the evolution of our universe backwards in time, at some point we arrive at the threshold of eternal inflation, where our familiar notion of time ceases to have any meaning," said Hertog. Hawking's previous no-limit theory anticipates that if you travel in time to the universe's origin, the world would shrink and close off like a globe. Still, the business hypothesis differs from his previous work. 
Now we're saying that there is a boundary in our past, said Hertog. Hertog and Hawking utilized their new explanation to make more accurate forecasts about the universe's entire design. They projected that the universe formed by peripheral inflation on the historical border would be small and significantly more straightforward than the endless fractal complexity promised by the traditional eternal inflation hypothesis. If additional research validates their findings, they will have far-reaching ramifications for the multiverse concept. We are not down to a single unique universe, but our findings imply a significant reduction of the multiverse to a much smaller range of possible universes said Hawking. This improved the theory's predictability and testability. After that, Hertog intends to investigate the ramifications of the new theory on local levels, which are within the range of our spy satellites. The most potential smoking gun to test the idea, he says, is primeval cosmic rays, disturbances in space-time, forming at the end of eternal inflation. Because our universe has been expanding since the beginning, any gravity waves would have extremely long wavelengths, far beyond the detection range of the present LIGO sensors. However, they could be detected in future tests, detecting the cosmic background radiation by the proposed European Space-Based Gravitational Wave Laboratory, LISA. Is the multiverse theory of Stephen Hawking supported by James Webb Space Telescope? The much-anticipated, groundbreaking addition to the Pantheon of Space Probes, the James Webb Space Telescope is ultimately about to make a significant ripple, refreshing change from the swells its off-delayed debut and soaring costs have produced. NASA plans to launch the spacecraft on Christmas after repeated delays this year. The telescope's launch has now been postponed for a year, and the project's budget has grown by about $9 billion above budgeted. Many scientists believe Webb is a good investment, and the wait despite concerns from legislators and scientists that it is symphoning funds from other study fields. Because of leadership responsibility, the newest space-bound gadget is unusual. First and foremost, it's massive, with a 21.3-foot reflector that will make Webb the farthest seeing telescope ever constructed. Second, Webb sees the planet in infrared light, which has somewhat greater wavelengths than visible light on the electromagnetic spectrum. It will be the only infrared-only telescope in orbit to see across great distances. Hubble, its nearest rival, works mainly in the visible spectrum and has a restricted infrared observing capability. The release of the James Webb Space Telescope may now provide the data needed to evaluate one of Stephen Hawking's most decisive theories, the dark energy. The undetectable material that makes up most of the matter and energy could be made up of black holes created in the Big Bang's opening portion. These astrophysicists have devised a theory that explains the presence of dark matter and the visual appeal of the universe's most giant black hole. As per Life Science, they claim that numerous new equipment, notably the James Webb Space Telescope, which was just deployed, could provide the data required to evaluate Hawking's renowned theory fully. What I find personally super exciting about this idea is how it elegantly unifies the two challenging problems that I work on that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop. Study co-author Priyamvada Natarajan, an astrophysicist at Yale University, said in a statement, as per Live Science, according to astronomers, black holes arise only after massive stars die and lead to a collapse of their force. Creating black holes necessitates many stars, which require a large amount of ordinary stuff. From the computations of the early cosmos, scientists have learned how much usual stuff there is. The suspect, however, is that there isn't enough regular material to make all of the dark energy, which accounts for more than 80% of all stuff in the universe. As a result, Stephen Hawking proposed in 1971 that black holes evolved in the chaotic situation of the Big Bang's early movement. He had explained that pockets of matter could spontaneously reach the densities needed to make black holes, flooding the cosmos with them well before the first stars twinkled. He also suggested that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter.